Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to introduce the Sample Wrench Audio Editor and Analyzer. This is a free tool for you to use, personal use, non-commercial use, uh, non-profit use. This used to be a um, commercial program, and uh, recently I decided to just release it like my OER texts, free for people to use. So you want to go to dissidents.com. This is my website. This is also, of course, where you can get the books, right? The OER text. So you want to come in here and grab this uh, sample wrench, audio editor and analyzer. And what we see over here is uh, uh, two products, really. There's sample wrench and then there's its sort of little brother sample wrench xe so sample wrench is a is a high resolution high fidelity editor and um, it stores everything internally in 32-bit floating point format so it's much greater than cd quality xe the little brother here is um, sort of a scaled down version it uses 16-bit cd quality it doesn't have quite as many functions it's not quite as um, sort of open-ended, if you will. It's not as, as customizable, uh, but it's a nice, simple tool. If you just want to uh, edit some, some wave files, things like that, it's a great little tool. But Sample Wrench, um, like I said, uh, has more bells and whistles. So we're going to take a look at Sample Wrench itself. Once you understand how it works, um, Sample Wrench XE is, is uh, fairly straightforward. Okay, so all you, all you really need to do is uh, hit the download button over here. You'll get your, um, you know, appropriate prompts depending on the kind of uh, 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 browser you're using and so forth. Install it. This is strictly a Windows uh, application. So make sure you have that or you have some kind of virtual machine that can run Windows. Although it will, it will work all the way down back to um, XP. So if you have an old machine somewhere that you want to use, uh, you can use this uh, this bit of software, um, and it's a pretty small footprint. It requires less than 10 megabytes on your hard drive. So there you have it. So anyway, um, there's also uh, a PDF manual that's 130 some odd pages long, and then these little shortcut guides, uh, which you know just sort of give you an overview. But in any case, let's assume that you've installed it, and now you want to run it. Okay, so this is what you'll see. I've blown this up to full size. There is one edit window open. Now you can have up to 99 individual edit windows open. There's probably never any need to have that many, but you can. In any case, um, there's a series of toolbar buttons up here. This is the area where the waveform is going to be drawn. And I'm just going to haul in um, a sound that already exists just so that you can see what's going on. But normally, you know, you would just, um, you know, um, open and go through the appropriate uh, process. But in any case, we have the main view and then we have an overview. So this is always the full sample. And then this is the part you're sort of zooming into. On this axis, amplitude. On this axis, time. And this is fully customizable. Notice these buttons right here. Right, zoom out, zoom in. So if I, for example, hit this uh, zoom in horizontal, you can see what's happened. Right? This is the area we've zoomed into. This is the highlighted area indicating, hey, this is what you're looking at, right? And in the, in the uh, sort of big picture. And you can pop that all the way back like so. You can also use this zoom box, right? Little magnifying glass. And that's what you're going to get. And again, you can see how that reflects. You can also use this tool in the overview. You could say, hey, I want to see that. And that's what you get down here. All right. So it's um, either way. Go back to normal mode. Now, as far as customizability, you can change colors for various parts. You can change the font. Um, other kinds of things. You, the, the overview is optional. You don't have to have that. So let me just kind of walk down here. You know, the edit menu has the usual kinds of things, you know, cut, copy, paste, delete, 
you know, mute, trim, those kinds of things. And then we have the, the view menu. So these first few are the same as the buttons. Then we have your units, horizontal axis units can be seconds, minutes or seconds, words, sample points in other words. Then we have uh, a bunch of frame types. So if you're using video, audio for video, 24 frames, this is total frames, 25, 30 drop frame, 30, and then the same thing in uh, hours, minutes, seconds, frames format. And if you're doing some music, you can do beats or measures and beats. That has to be set up first. Then we have some nice little things here. So here's the um, box outline that you see right here. There's the overview. There's an XY readout. Notice you can change the colors, the font, and so forth. There's also a bunch of views. So if you're working on something and you're flipping back and forth, you can set up to 10 views, independent views. Right? So set them and then retrieve them. So you can just use Alt-123 to sort of move around quickly in, into, the, um, um, into the sound file. Okay, so, and, you know, options will get you like all of these things at once. Use the menu if you only have to change one thing. If you have to change a bunch of things, just use view options and off you go, right? So if you notice up here, right, these two numbers, this is wherever the mouse is pointing. It'll give you the X value. Right now I've got this set up in seconds. So if it's a small value, you know, you're getting milliseconds. And then the amplitude right now is set up um, as a, a negative dB value. But um, just to kind of show you what your, what your options are here, all right, you can do it as a percent. So there's 100%, 0%, plus and minus. All right, see, so again, customize how you want this thing to look, all right? Whatever you want. Now, in the setup menu, and again, there's going to be some buttons over here. For the setup menu, there's four different ways you can edit things. You can either affect everything, regardless of how you're zoomed in. That's this, affect all. A V is affect that which is in view. So in other words, if we, I'll just very quickly zoom in. Only this area, right? Only this big thing down here is what's going to be affected. If you're going to do EQ or, you know, whatever the heck it is, that's the only part that's, that's going to be affected. Then we have a R, which is markers. We can set markers. There's a whole menu for um, markers, setting markers and so forth. Um, so that's if you need very, very tight control, you can set a marker, set another marker, and it's just between markers 0 and 1, that's what's going to get edited. And then finally, a M is mouse. So this is the standard sort of thing that you would expect. As a matter of fact, this is the soul mode that Wrench XE uses. You can only use the mouse. So you would just highlight an area and, you know, there's no zooming. That's the thing that is going to be uh, edited, right? So if I did a full zoom out, right, this is the area. Come in, select it, off you go, right? So fairly straightforward in that regard. But if you're looking at little s snippets of sound, now you might want to just do the, the effect all, right? Okay, so then there are some other little things out here. Um, you can set the number of backups. No backups, one backup, you know, multiple backups. Uh, all depends on how much memory you have and how big these sound samples are, you know, for practical purposes. Uh, smoothing is a nice little function. If you're editing something like, like a little piece in here, It'll smooth between the edited and non-edited areas. Sometimes that's nice. You don't want an abrupt sort of change. Auto zoom out. Once you're done editing, it'll zoom out so you can see everything. Um, if you have a slower machine or you're working on really big files, you can set this thing for a boardable. So in midstream, you can just hit a button and it'll stop the edit. Edit and play. When you're done editing, it'll automatically play the sound for you. And we have configuration files. So all of these things that you're setting, you know, the, the colors, the fonts, and, you know, units and so forth, you can save those as configuration files and then load them in. So you can have different configurations for different, you know, jobs, if you will. Um, and there is actually a way of having these auto load. If you have something called wrench.config, that will automatically be, automatically be loaded as long as it's sitting in the startup directory. There's a full macro language that automates all kinds of crazy stuff, and there is a way to automatically record those macros. Setups for file paths. 
So you have a, a sounds path that you're working with and a presets. You can make your own presets and save those. And then toolbars. So you can have um, little floating toolbars out here if you prefer to use those instead of just using the, the menu items. Okay, for, format is the default style of um, file format that you're going to save, but you can, you can change that when you save. This is just sort of a convenience thing. Um, mostly, you know, this is designed to be used with WAV files. And there are options. You know, most people aren't aware of this, but there are a bunch of little optional chunks inside WAV files for things like uh, key maps and loops and markers and so forth. So you can turn those on and off. Some programs will be broken. You know, they won't, they won't probably uh, properly load a file if it has these extra chunks in it. It'll get confused. And if you have uh, MIDI, if you have some old MIDI samplers, uh, it is possible to communicate with those. So there's a, a bunch of different old MIDI samplers that uh, are out there. Matter of fact, that's what Sample Wrench was originally designed to do. It was designed to work with these MIDI samplers. Okay, so the mode, these, these buttons we were talking about over here, normal zoom box, freehand draw, which we'll get to, and scrub. Scrub is a way of, of uh, sort of mimicking the old reel-to-reel -reel decks where you could scrub the tape across the heads to get an edit point. The biggies over here are the functions menu and the effects menu. So these are all the kinds of crazy things that you can do to the sound. This is not just cut, paste, copy, gain. There's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. All right? Okay, so, you know, one thing you want to do, of course, is playback. Well, the obvious playback, there's four playback buttons. Um, you can play back the, the entire sound. You can loop the entire thing so you can hear it over and over and over again, all right? Um, play the effect area, again, which effect area you've set up. And then there's a, a stop play button. Um, the easy thing to do is you can just hit the space bar. Drop five forms in the box before you go out. Drop five forms in the box before you go out. And so that's looping. And then I just hit the space bar again to stop it. All right, fairly standard. What's this guy? What's the pencil? Well, if you're really zoomed in far, right, you're going to see just these little things. You can use this pencil to actually draw stuff. So. Maybe you have like a, a noise click or a spike or something. You can literally draw the thing out. I'll just do something stupid. Right, just use the, the pencil. I'm going to undo that. And then, you know, you can kind of do something and then erase it. All right? So I brought it back, so it erased it. All right, so... If you um, want to perform an effect, and let's start with something really simple here. Um, let's say you want to do a little gain change, all right, just some basic level control. Um, maybe I want to you know, just make it a little bit louder, a little bit softer. So just, just so it's obvious, I'm just going to drop this down 7.3 decibels. All right. Boom. You can see how it drops down. If you play it back, drop five forms in the box before you go out. That will be somewhat quieter. Drop five forms in the box before you go out. Make sure all five in the box. All right. Um, standard, you know, cut, copy, paste kind of stuff. So you could um, do something like this. Hit the delete key or you can you can come up. Um, into the edit, you know, delete it or mute it. In other words, make it silent, leave the sound there. Deleting it is literally going to get rid of stuff. Trim or crop gets rid of everything else and it leaves this. So if I just hit the delete key, boom, right, that piece is gone. And if you played it back, five forms, in the right, so just five forms versus Drop. Drop. Okay, there you go. All right. So, how about shuffle? Huh? Suppose you, you select something like this, right? Drop five forms, blah, blah, blah. So I select this little area and I grab it with the mouse. And I move it. 
Now let's see what that sounds like. Five drop forms. Right, so you can just pick up these pieces, highlight it, grab it with the mouse, move it wherever you want. So, you know, ultimate sort of cut and paste here with the audio. Swap those pieces. All right. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think the, the cut, copy, paste, and all that is fairly straightforward. If you ever used a word processor, it works very much the same way. The um, functions and effects are really where it gets pretty interesting. Um, you know, and also the, avail the availability to, uh, to loop sounds and some of these kinds of things. We'll pick up that in other videos.